Hello my dear friends, Alex here from Alex Edit. So the newest Wondershare Filmora 13 suddenly changed our video editing from this to this. Honestly guys, I've been waiting for this keyframing update for quite some time now. I even tried to replicate this effect using the speed ramping of Filmora 12. But honestly, the effect could not come out right. It wasn't exactly good as much as I expected. You can check it for yourself right there, it's one of my recent videos. So that is why I'm so excited today to reveal this keyframing update of Filmora 13. So guys, this is what I did. I created a full guide tutorial briefly demonstrating how you can use all of those features in Wondershare Filmora 13. And now after that, I have to give you the detailed information of how to use each and every one of these features specifically one after the other. And just as you have seen on the title, this is all about the keyframing update. So drag down your video clip into the timeline. So I'm going to use this very short video right here for all of my examples throughout the video. So the very first point to make right here guys is to make you understand that almost everything that we've been doing on Filmora 12, we are still doing the same thing right here. This is just an addition. We are not subtracting. We are actually adding. Okay. Now you can add a keyframe to your video. Now for this example, let me just add a keyframe using this option right here from the taskbar. And as usual, the keyframe shows up on the editing panel. But this update is more than that. We now have the new keyframing panel. So when you select the option right here, you're going to see something very, very interesting. Okay, let me start by showing you everything around this keyframing panel. By the way, let me adjust my layout so that I give the keyframing panel a bigger space. So I think the first thing right here, I have to delete this keyframe right here so that I leave the keyframing panel empty and let you see everything from scratch. So right here we have the timeline. As you can see right here, we have a duration count and the duration of the timeline always depends on the selected clip. And right here you can zoom in your timeline and zoom out using these options right here. And these are graphical options right here, which I'm going to explain just now. And to move out of the keyframing panel, just select this option right here and you are out. And when you select it again, you are back. Now, when I add a transform keyframe right here, you are going to see keyframes lining downwards like in this way, which you can interpret very easy. So this first keyframe right here is actually representing the x-axis of the scale. And the next one is the y of the scale again. And this third one is the X of the position, which is this one right here. And this one right here is the Y axis of the position. And of course, this one is the rotation. And now I move just a few frames like this. And let me just increase the scale. And as you can see, we have two keyframes that are automatically added because we've only affected the scale. So let me say I just want to bring this main right on the center of the frame and for that I'm going to use the position or else I will do it through the preview screen. And as you can see, two more keyframes have been added. Now let me explain to you the reason for this going up and going down of these lines right here. Now when you increase the value, it can be the X axis or the Y axis, these lines goes up. And as you can see right here, the more I increase the values, the more the lines move upwards. Same things with these keyframes below because the values are all negative. That is the reason why these lines goes down. And because we didn't affect the rotation, we still have one keyframe for rotation and we couldn't have the next one. But when we tweak around the rotation of this thing, we are going to see another keyframe is going to be added. Now, if the downs or the ups of these lines right here, if they are representing something, that same fact means that you can use these lines to transform your image or your video the way you want. For example, let me delete this second keyframe right here. And I'll do that just by deleting this keyframe right here. So let me say I want to zoom on this very frame right here. I will just add a transform keyframe and then lift it up slightly. And as you can see, we have a zoom, but there's something wrong with this zoom. Why? The reason is we have zoomed only the X axis, but we did not zoom the Y axis. So I can do the same thing right here and lift this keyframe of the Y axis. And we can do the same for the second pair of keyframes again. 
and now as you can see we've worked out the same zoom effect on the keyframing panel the same way we could do on the transform panel so now the next thing that i would like you to understand right here is you can work with one keyframe like this or else you can work with multiple keyframes like this for example if i want to delete all of them i have to select multiple of them and then hit delete now let me show you the most important thing which are the graphical controls right here generally these controls the smoothness of your keyframes so you can either use them by right selecting the keyframe or else you can use these graph symbols over here for example when you right select you see the linear curve continuous curve freeze is in is out now the first one which is the linear is the same as the default it doesn't give any effect and when we check on the graphical symbol of linear you see it's a straight curve it doesn't have any change of speed at any point and these two following which is the curve and the continuous curve are almost the same thing they all make the animation smooth and also the is in and the is out for example let me apply the continuous curve you're going to see this continuous curve symbol right here on the keyframe and when you preview you find out that there's a smooth effect of animations now there is this other one which is called the freeze so when you apply it on both ends of keyframes it's going to make a direct cut when it reaches the second keyframes so for your smooth animations you can use this one this one and also you can do the is in and the is out generally you do the is in on the first keyframes and then you do the is out on the last keyframe now the same way that we are animating our video clips and images you can do the same thing on the titles giving you the opportunity to make smooth title animations i think this is all you need to know guys about keyframing on Fimora 13. if you still need help let me know in the comments so just stay tuned because my next upload is another detailed video about one of these features in Fimora 13.